Over a year of construction has brought the complex's various elements, to the verge of launching the most powerful rocket in history. Elon Musk said that SpaceX Stage 0, which is one of the most complex element ever built, will be completed later this month, to potentially set the stage for major rocket testing next month. The primary booster quick disconnect, which connects super heavy to power, communications, and propellant supplies, will also retract into a hooded enclosure at some point during the process. Finally, a giant, swinging arm located about halfway up Starbase's launch tower, will retract a similar quick disconnect panel for Starship fueling, retract two claw-like support arms, and swing back for liftoff. Altogether, while there are likely even more than just those described above, a single Starship launch will require at least 44 separate devices, to successful actuate in rapid and precise succession 41 for Super Heavy and at least 3 for Starship. That incredible complexity, probably making Starships the most mechanically complex launch mount in the history of rocketry, may partially explain, why Super Heavy Booster 4 has yet to even attempt a single proof test, more than four months after it first left the high bay it was built in. Without a functioning orbital launch mount, it hasn't been possible to fully test a super heavy booster. With any luck, on their third rendezvous, both booster 4 and the orbital launch mount are finally close enough to completion to perform some serious testing. At the absolute minimum, everything appears to be in order for SpaceX, to properly connect super heavy to the launch mount and pad for the first time, the process of which is already underway. Aside from connecting V4 to the mount's hold-down clamps, which has been done twice before, SpaceX can now attach all 20 Raptor Quick Disconnects, and the main booster Quick Disconnect to a Super Heavy for the first time. Further up the tower, SpaceX can also partially test out the Starship Quick Disconnect arm, which is half designed to grab onto and stabilize Super Heavy. This device will protect the booster Quick Disconnect mechanism, from the extreme forces of Super Heavy's Raptor engines, after it retracts the installation of QD is still continuing, not only with Booster but also with the Starship. SpaceX hasn't quite finished installing those arms, but the arms assembly's first real move is likely just a few weeks away. On the other hand, SpaceX. We also need to complete shakedown testing of the arms themselves, ensuring that the massive structures, hydraulic, electrical and mechanical systems are all working properly in the near future. Those arms will be used to grab lift and install super heavy boosters and stack starships on top of them. While SpaceX also hopes to eventually use them to catch boosters and ships out of midair. Designed to fuel the starship and stabilize the top of super heavy with its claw, the starship QD arm is also able to swing left and right both to quickly back away during launches and to make room for the catch arms during rocket catches and ship slash booster stacking operations. Previously, on November 23 SpaceX installed the last major component of the arm, the actual QD mechanism that will connect to Starship to supply power, communications and propellant. A few small actuators likely still need to be installed, and the QD mechanism itself will have to be fully connected to pad systems. But the QD arm now appears to be more or less complete, and should soon be ready to fuel Starships installed on top of Super Heavy Boosters. This is another fantastic labeling and another great photo from Starship Gazer. Now we know exactly what each port is for the Starship QD panel a few days ago, the booster QD protective shield was also attached to the crane, and ready to be lifted into place on the other side. SpaceX performed multiple tests of the pad's orbital launch mount, the giant steel structure that will support Super Heavy hold the booster down, during testing and before liftoff, and of course supply with thousands of tons of propellant. On November 21st, SpaceX completed the first of those tests seemingly venting an unknown gas out of the mount. But more likely than not it was the first simultaneous test, of all 20 of the mount's Raptor boost engine gas supplies, which having no need to reignite in flight, will rely on ground gas supplies for ignition each of Super Heavy's 20 outer Raptor engines, has a small umbilical and quick disconnect mechanism, resulting in what is likely the most mechanically complex rocket launch mount ever built. On November 22, the orbital launch mount's booster quick disconnect panel activated for the first time, showing off the first glimpse of how it will move forward, to connect to Super Heavy after a booster is installed onto the mount. To prevent its sensitive components from being practically incinerated each launch, the mount QD panel will also need to rapidly move away from Super Heavy, just before it lift off. 
aside from simply avoiding direct impingement from the several thousand degree plume, created by 29-33 Raptor engines at full thrust. That movement will also tie into some kind of hood seamlessly, actuating hatches that will close to truly protect the device. That hood was itself spotted for the first time on the 21st of this month, and will likely be installed on the launch mount, and over the naked QD mechanism in the very near future. Finally over the last week or so, SpaceX has begun installing a number of new pipes on and around the launch mount, likely assembling a water deluge system, that will help manage the extreme thermal and acoustic environment, created by the most powerful rocket in history. Shortly before and after liftoff when activated a spray bar circling the mount's full interior circumference, will likely unleash several tons of water per second in a giant artificial waterfall. Hopefully, preventing Super Heavy from damaging itself with the sheer sound produced by its Raptor engines, or violently eroding the surrounding pad, or launch mount legs with its plume. Ultimately once all the aforementioned, tower arm and mount work is almost completed. The only obvious thing standing between the orbital launch pad, and the first Super Heavy booster testing, and first orbital Starship launch will be the delivery of liquid methane fuel. Which could easily begin any day now. Which brings us to the latest update about SpaceX's orbital tank farm bear in mind, that the following numbers are just approximations. The orbital tank farm can store about 4,950 metric tons of liquid oxygen, 1420 metric tons of methane, and 2,710 metric tons of liquid nitrogen. The entire rocket needs about 1040 metric tons of methane, 780 ton on the booster, and 260 ton on Starship, and 3,760 metric tons of liquid oxygen. Around 2,820 on the booster and 940 on Starship, with these rough estimates the orbital tank farm, has enough propellant for just one orbital launch. With margin left over for a possible recycle, the approximately 2,710 metric tons of liquid oxygen allow SpaceX, to fully cryotest a booster. However there is a local regulation in Cameron County, where Boca Chica Village and Starbase are located, that limit the maximum amount of fuel, that can be transported by trucks. However, the Musk-led company still needs to wait for the Federal Aviation Administration, to complete its environmental assessment before Starship can leave the ground. The FAA announced in November that it would complete the review on December 31st, which means SpaceX has all the regulatory approvals needed to send its massive rocket into space. The news, however, may not be a surprise to Musk who has continuously said a launch was possible by January 2022. Thanks for watching this video, and it's a super interesting topic if you like this make sure to subscribe, if you have any crazy ideas about what we should cover in next video please comment it below, and we'll see if we can get to it so thanks again for watching and goodbye.